Okay, we're gonna go ahead and get started today with our first presenter. I'm super ex excited. Sally, you can go ahead and go to your first slide if you would like. Sally is here with us today and she started her career in the northernmost school library in the United States. Among that, she was in Alaska. So fast forward to today, she is the district librarian for the Burlington Area School District. She oversees four elementary schools. Her passions include marker spaces, sharing new technologies, and prompting the amazing diverse children's literature being created. She has been a classroom teacher in North Carolina, a school librarian in Alaska and Wisconsin, and a children's librarian for the Mason Memorial Library in Elkhorn, sorry. She also owned a, a state certified preschool for eight years. So if there's one piece of advice she would give her former self, it would be to utilize her librarian. And I will tell you that um, Sally has came and presented for us before, and she has been on our podcast. She is amazing, and she has great ideas, because sometimes as teachers, we don't know that we need to be using our library. And so, Sally, we are so very excited that you're here today. The floor is yours. Hey, Dr. Shipley, could you just unmute Sally, please? She Hi, um, I don't think I have video either. I'm not sure if you wanted me to be on video, but um, hello everybody. Hopefully you can hear me. Um, my name is Sally Nye, like that was stated, and I'm so excited to be the first speaker today. There's so many fun things to talk about and so many resources for a preschool teacher. So I'm so excited to talk about those with you today. So let's get started. Um, first of all, as a preschool teacher, um, I did own uh, my own preschool for eight years. It does get lonely to be a teacher. And um, I do want you to realize that you are not alone out there. Um, I do want you to realize that you, there are so many great resources that are at your fingertips. And um, as a librarian, I really want to promote that um, your librarian is one of your best um, partners that you can have. Um, your school, or if you're at a school, or if you're at a um, and just a local preschool, you can use your local public librarian. They can do so many things, such as story times for you. Um, even in home preschools, as a public librarian, I used to go to people's homes and present story times for them. Um, you can pull books for a theme. So if you call the library and say, hey, I, I'm, I'm doing a space theme. Can you get me as many like space books for our early readers? They'll do that for you and they'll have extra like finger plays, they'll have puppets, they'll have felt board items that you can use. So many things that are free for you. I know as a preschool owner, I felt like my pocketbook was always coming out trying to buy things for my preschool, but they have so many things. Our library even has a ukulele you can check out and learn how to use, um, which the kids would think is fantastic. Um, there's also STEM projects. They're always doing different maker and STEM projects, which they get some technology. There's some like um, robotic Legos, all kinds of things that are very expensive that you can check out as well and use with your students. Um, also the digital resources. There's a lot of online um, games and learning programs and digital books that your students can use. Um, and don't forget about those author visits. This summer, I even worked with um, a public librarian and we had um, the author of Zoe and Sassafras do a virtual meet with our students. And she was fantastic and the kids loved asking questions. So it's a really great resource to partner up and bring those authors to your students. And the best thing ever is they take requests. So if there's a book you're really looking for or something you really need, um, don't forget to let your librarian know that that's what you want them to purchase and they will. They're always looking for requests. They want to use their money in a way that will get used. And so ask them for the, re the resources that you would like to use. Um, I know that library websites sometimes get a little confusing. Um, this is our public library right in our town in Burlington where I'm from. And um, I know there's like writing and, and visuals everywhere. 
So the best thing is to learn how, where to look and how to use it. So let me see. So if I go to the site, you can always see that your information when they're open, when you can go is usually on some side of um, some table, but you also have um, your different categories that you can go to. So I always look for those kids and teens and you can look for what programs or links that they have. And um, in these services, they'll usually tell you who the librarian is and what resources they have for teachers as well. If you go to bigger libraries like the Madison Public Library um, in Wisconsin, it's a really big library, um, they have even more items. So if you go to kids, um, you can see that they have all these great resources such as, such as racial equity resources that you can use. There's a whole educator system. Um, they have different book lists you can use, different story times that you can use in your classrooms, um, all sorts of resources for you already done so you don't even have to do that. So that's what I always love, <laughs> not having to do extra work. So don't forget to use those public libraries. Now, now, during COVID, um, digital resources also came to a prime. There are so many free resources for you to use right now. And today I'm just going to highlight a few things that you're able to use and, and just and find on the internet. So the first one here is Starfall. If you've never looked at Starfall, I really urge you to go there. And um, when I ran my preschool, this was one of my students' favorite things to go to. So I'll go to the kindergarten one right now. And there's so many fun songs about every different topic. Some of our favorites were the ABCs we'd go to. And for each letter, there's different songs that go with it. And so you can learn about little A, big A, and, and um, the kids would sing along and just have a great time. So there's colors and there's letters and there's all sorts of fun things in there. And um, there's different books, there's um, little read alongs and, um, and like I said, the kids just had a blast with that. Um, yeah, and that's what it looks like. Um, there's some other sites too, such as Reading is Fundamental. There's some free books for you to read with students right on there. And even with your own kids, if you have your own kids um, sitting at the doctor's office, these are always great resources to go to and um, just to entertain kids if you need a little bit of time. So um, actually I'll just go here. And so you can see that there's all kinds of read alouds. If you take a mouse to school, balloons over Broadway, all sorts of really great books, quality books that you can use with your students for free. So there's 309 of them in there. So I really recommend taking a look at that. Um, let's go to our next slide. Epic is another fantastic resource. As you can see, it has 40,000 books, audiobooks, and videos for kids, and it's free for you. Um, as a teacher. If students want to use it at home, there is um, a small price that their family would have to use. But during the hours of 7.30 to 3.30, you are free to use that with your students. And I'll show you what that looks like. Oops. This bar is getting in the way. Here we go. <laughs> and so um, there's just a login that you have to go and you can see that there's a student educators there's a class code that you can give your students and they can go right in. Oh, they must have changed it. But I have a Google account too, so that's no problem. <laughs> so every year I think you have to update the code and, and they must have just switched that on me. Um, and you're going to see that you can explore and you can look for anything. They have read to me books for the younger readers. They have comic books, there's audio books. Um, there's books that they think that you would like. So they do recommendations for you and just all sorts of them. Let's go to the read to me. Oops, looks like my seventh grader was looking at it. <laughs> there we go. So now we get our Peep the Cats. And you can see that some of them have read to me at the bottom of it. And that means if you click on it, it will read for the students. Not all of the, um, not all of the books have that feature. So let's go to comics and you'll see like this one would not read for the students, but this one would. So it's not all of them read for the students, but you can choose what level you want it to be. You can choose 
um, recommended books by other students. And you can create libraries for your students where you create a list that they can go to and choose those books. And it's all free for you, so amazing. Um, Unite for Literacy is another fantastic site. This has a lot of nonfiction, easy texts for your students. And so you can see there's um, eyes like these if they like animals. And if you click on it, you'll see that it's a nice and big book. And if you want to hear it, you can click on the English and it will read for you. The pictures are really fabulous. There's really nice easy text for the students. And um, yeah, so my kindergartners especially really love those best books. Um, and sometimes through your public library, there is something called Sora that's also um, with OverDrive. And um, those are free eBooks for students as well. So I would definitely get right to your public library and see, do they have Sora for students? Or else if you're in a school district, um, I have Sora for my students in my, in my school district. And it's more free um, books for them to look at. Now, um, I, I am going to share these slides with you at the end. And, um, this right here, during COVID, I went through and I found all kinds of virtual resources. There's a ton of free items for you. And so I do have different um, trials that you can do and, um, and you can just knock yourself out and have fun looking through them. There's eBooks, podcasts, all sorts of items. So I would definitely, if you click right there, I'll show you what that looks like. Um, there's story times given by other people, audiobooks, math, sites, practice sites, educational games, there's magazines, language arts, um, different science and different virtual field trips you can take your kids on. Um, really, some really fun music apps, and just some fun like how to draw Disney characters, fun sites, and some different apps for your iPads. And so um, all of these are free items. And I know we're coming out of COVID and quarantine, so some of them might go back to pay but um, for now, I try to keep up with it the best I can. Now, um, so those are the different free resources that I really love for getting information. The next ones I'm going to go into are free resources for creating with your students. And one of my favorite creation sites is Flipgrid. Flipgrid is a really fantastic site where your kids, um, let me log in real quick. I was kicked out of all of them, here we go. Um, it's a place where you can ask a question of your students and they can easily record a response. So if you want any um, portfolio items for them, um, it's a really easy way to get quick responses from students. So um, in one way we did that, like we did some state research with students and the kids were able to research a state and then record okay. about My their state. state so they had to tell what their state was, what it was known for. And it was just a really easy way to keep everything together. Sometimes I ask them, what's your favorite book? Or um, and they could do a little book review. Maybe what was your favorite thing you did during the summer? Or you could ask them and they could all respond. And it's an easy way to get back to them. I showed this to our music teacher and she loved it for um, recorder practice. So she could keep up with all of their levels of the recorder. So it's just a great way to keep track of the students' work. Um, and I do have a practice flip grid on there. So if you are interested in trying it out yourself, um, after we're done here, you can click on that and try recording yourself. You can put little emojis next to yourself. You can, and um, with this, we also like combined it with another app I'll be talking about um, called Chatter Kid, where they made themselves a famous person and made that fam famous person talk. So that was kind of fun. So here's that Chatter Kids app that I'm talking about. This is another fantastic free resource. Um, the kids can take, if they're doing animal research, they can take a picture of that animal and draw a mouth on it and make it talk so it can tell about itself. Um, you can make anything talk. It's super funny. The kids love it. And 
they're learning a lot as they do it as well. Um, a new resource I just found this year is called Book Creator. This is really fun for a classroom. The kids can create their own books. They can insert pictures. They can type out their own text. Um, you can help them out with that. Um, when I ran a preschool, we created weekly our classroom books and the kids loved creating their own books that they then were able to read. I highly recommend doing this with your kids. It is the highest form of getting them interested in reading because they loved reading each other's stories. So this was a cheetah story that one of my students read or created. And you can make a title and and obviously she forgot her capital letters, but that was okay. She, she learned a lot. She learned about why the black lines were on their faces and how fast they could run and where they lived. And she found some really great pictures to go with that. And this was just one a student created on her own. She just loved it and created about 10 books. <laughs> and so um, I think if you want to create a certain, a higher amount, there is a small fee. But if you only want a small amount of books to use with your class, um, you don't have to pay anything with Book Creator. And it was pretty self-explanatory how to use. It's pretty easy. Oh, and as you see, I do have a code for you to use if you want to try it out and see how it works. Now, there are so many resources. A lot of problems comes with how in the world do I share these resources with my students? How do they not get overwhelmed? How do I get them where they can actually get where they need to be? And um, one of those things, there's a lot of great YouTube, um, going to YouTube videos first. Um, one problem with YouTube is there's all those ads and it gets kind of inappropriate, the other videos that, that are next to it that you really don't want your kids to see. Um, I found a really quick um, runaround with that. So if you go to, you're going to see any video has the www.youtube.com in its address. If you go right into the address bar at the top and you just put a dash a hyphen between the T and the U, it automatically makes it a child safe where it only shows the video on the screen. So that's a really great way to present YouTube videos really quickly and easily without all the extra that you don't want them to see. Um, to keep all your apps and your programs together, I find that Symbaloo is one of my favorite ways to do that. Um, it creates a grid and the kids just click on the grid that they want to use. This is a free program. You can update for a cost, but I haven't and I never need to. It, it works perfectly. Um, there we go. It works perfectly without that. So I'm going to go. I actually put it on my website for my school and you can even color code it. So the ones in kind of brownish yellow are their research sites they go to. The blue are the digital books they can go to and the purple are some science. So they kind of can look at the colors and know where to go on it. So I love Symbaloo, very easy to share with kids what they're looking for. Um, if you're looking to really promote your preschool classroom, especially if you own your own preschool, um, I would really suggest Shutterfly's share sites. This was something that I used with my students and um, it was really great and I'll show you why. On this site, you can see that there's updates that get sent to the parents. It's connected to their emails and so you get the weekly updates. Every week I would have pictures and videos that they'd be able to look at. Doesn't want to work right now. Let's see. There we go. So every week I'd put in the new um, pictures of the week so they could see what we are up to. If there's any videos, they were off to the side that the parents could watch. And, um, and if they liked any of the pictures, they could just download them and print them themselves if they wanted to. Um, one of my favorite things is at the end of the year, I was able to create a little yearbook from these pictures. It's only like $5, the smallest little paperback yearbook for the students. And they loved those. My son and daughter carried them around with them um, for the next year. They loved looking at their friends. And I was able to create like great posters I could hang up and so they could see themselves. So um, Shutterfly is fantastic. You have all your contacts you can keep in here too for easy um, communication with parents. There's even a volunteer section where if you need volunteers for something, they can sign up for time slots. 
and you can put your calendar of your year on it as well so they can know what's coming up. So this is a really, really great site for just keeping all your preschool things together. And um, I definitely recommend it. And I, I'm a very, very Google centric person. My school district is as well and Google makes everything pretty easy to use. If you're in a school district, especially um, using Google Classroom is a fantastic way just to keep all your information for students. You can update things as you go and students can communicate with you if you want them to, or you can shut it off and mute them if they're not handling it okay. Um, you can put classwork that actually you can grade right in it. What I mostly used it for is I had websites for the kids to go to where they would find their library lessons, especially during COVID, a lot of it was online and it kept everything right together and very streamlined so they knew exactly what was there. Your new posting is always at the top, so, um, so it's very easy to get to. And you can see I, I used um, Google Sites websites to just link right into my Google Classroom. Um, Google websites are very, very easy to use. And um, just if you need a quick way to put information online, I highly recommend that. Along with that, Google presentations or Google Slides were a great way to put information into those Google Sites. And I did something called um, Choice Boards with Google Slides. So on the slides, I made interactive links to different things. This was for our summer reading. So if they wanted to learn more about the public library, they could click on it. If they wanted to learn about the different programs, they could click to find out more. And I put videos of the public librarian talking about um, the programs. So, and if they needed help doing something, they could click on a help video. So interactive choice boards are great in the fact that um, the students can really get information that they're interested in. I was able to make one with um, so Children's Book Week and Star Wars Week, Earth Day. Every, every week I had a new emphasis that the kids could go to. National Library Week, Cran Day was kind of fun. So you can see that, um, so they could listen to a story, they could get out their crayons and create things. They could um, do coloring sheets online. And um, there's a fun craft they could do with a broken crayon. So anything that they clicked on on this sheet, they could go to and do. So virtual choice boards, a great way to get your kids interactive. It'd be great center, center builders. All right. So that was sites I was talking about to host all of your choice boards and information. And then the choice boards themselves, so Google Slides. Let me get that out of the way there. All right. So I highly recommend to you have all these resources. Now it's time to really listen to experts to learn what can I do with all these resources. So really looking at all those early childhood blogs, um, even library blogs are really interesting because they have a lot of book lists and information that you can use in your early childhood classrooms and, and um, finger plays and things like that. A couple of um, blogs that I really liked were Teach Preschool and Happy Hooligans. And if you have any others you'd recommend, I'd love you putting them in the comments because I'm always looking for fun um, ideas and love to see who you are following. So those were our digital resources, but I would feel like a really bad librarian if I didn't get to our print resources. And um, so really thinking about what type of readers do you have? And just finding that reading aloud is one of the most important things parents and teachers can do with children. Reading aloud builds many important foundational skills, introduces vocabulary, provides a model of fluent, expressive reading, and helps children recognize what reading for pleasure is all about. And um, so you have your active readers at the younger level here, and they're looking for those interactive, fun books. And they're acquiring language skills so quickly. They enjoy the sound of language, even the nonsense words, especially the nonsense words. And they love a good laugh. 
So that's why I really look for those books to play along with. So like tap to play bunny slopes where a bunny is going down a mountain. You have to move the book to go with the bunny. And my favorite are, is the press here and the books in that series. I and mean, then press here, it has you press a yellow button and it turns red and then it multiplies if you tap it. And the kids think it's fantastic. And, they have, and at the end they get to clap and it gets bigger and bigger. So just playing with that book and seeing that they can respond to books, awesome. Um, some author highlights in this category, Dan Thomas is one. Um, I think my son's favorite book in kindergarten was Rhyming Dust Bunnies. We had to read it like every day. And um, so you have these rhyming dust bunnies that get in all kinds of shenanigans. She has some other really funny books too. And their big pictures and colors really get the students involved and they love it. Um, music also always gets kids. And so if we think of Eric Litwin, who's created The Nuts, and also Pete the Cat, which I'm sure you've seen before, he has a lot of really fun books that you can really immerse the kids in. And if you, especially, I, I really highlight going to his webpage and getting his music videos to go with it. They're super fun. As you're going along, you're going to see if you click on the authors, it'll take you to their website and to the information on them. So this is a very interactive slideshow that I'll share with you that you'll be able to have all those links. Um, another author is Todd Parr. He is fantastic in talking about differences and um, similarities and just looking at the world a little different. And he has those bright colors again and just some great text the kids love to read. I cannot talk about early childhood books without uh, mentioning Mo Willems. He is just our modern day Dr. Seuss. He has created so many fantastic books. I'm sure you've seen Piggy and Elephant. We even had um, the little puppets that the kids love to act out Piggy and Elephant. I say that is the best book for early literacy. The kids learn their voices really quickly and they love to talk as them and they learn to, to express themselves and they love to get excited and they love to um, just act out what is in that book. And it makes that reading really um, meaningful. Um, we also have the Knuffle Bunny series and anything he creates is fantastic. So like I said, just funny and engaging books at this point. Um, Sam and Dave Dig a Hole is a fantastic story of two cousins who decide to have a spectacular day. And they're going to go in that backyard of their grandpa's house and see what's spectacular. And they almost find diamonds several times, which the kids think is very exciting. And so you see what is spectacular at the end. Um, our next book, The Day the Crayons Quit, each of the crayons is a little upset at their owner and they each write a letter declaring why they are angry. <laughs> Old Mama Squirrel has to protect her family from a bear that enters town and you don't want to mess with an old mama squirrel. And Silly Doggy talks about a girl who finds a dog in her backyard, or is it? <laughs> but an absolute favorite is the book with no pictures, which definitely has no pictures, but is one of the silliest books you can read. The kids ask for it over and over. Um, if you are interested in more great read aloud suggestions like that, I do have a list over here, the great read aloud list that I love to share with people. And um, if you click on that, it has like 50 books I'd recommend for using with your classroom. Um, don't forget about wordless books as well. There's been a lot of them created recently and you have things such as The Farmer and the Clown. Um, you have, um, Chris Van Ellsberg has a lot. And my favorite is this journey. A girl finds a magical red crayon and she creates a door that she goes into a new world. And there's three books in that series that the kids love to, I do it with story times and the kids tell the story as we go, it's fantastic. Now, as we're learning to read, dogs always come to the rescue. My favorite dogs are Puppy Mudge, Biscuit and Spot. And the kids love these books and they're fantastic pre-readers where they really start to spot those um, first words and really learn how to tell that story. And the pictures really help them out in those books as well. 
So once they start getting some of that vocabulary and start being able to read a little bit, um, what's next? We have our beginning chapter books for those early like first graders. And one of my new favorites, I think I mentioned was Zoe and Sassafras. Talking to the author, she really liked the Magic Treehouse books because they taught history and she wanted to do something the same. She was a science teacher. And she said, you know what? If I introduce science in through my chapter books, that's a great way to teach the scientific method. So Zoe and Sassafras was a fantastic um, chapter book series. There's about nine of them now. And, um, and she takes care of magical creatures using the scientific method. Um, so over here, I do have a link that you can click on and it will say beginning chapter books. And I have all different kinds of genres. So beginning mysteries, beginning realistic, beginning fantasy, um, lots of recommendations for students. And I've made them menu style. I like to do um, book tastings with kids where they sit down and they taste test different books and um, they then say if they like it or if they don't like it. And so they then get an idea of some books that they can read. So reading aloud creates empathy, a shared experience, vocabulary, and a love of language. And it continues to grow long after kids can read by themselves. So even as kids are getting older, we cannot forget to read to them. A lot of these books tackle tough topics and lead to discussions and they can find characters they can relate to. And you can use picture books that build knowledge and supports the connections of the world around them. So um, this book over here, The Breaking News, was a new one this year, just talking about when parents are seeing really scary things online and are getting worried, the kids were getting worried too. They didn't know how they could help. So how to deal with the bad news that you might be getting. So just a fantastic new book to look at. And um, I'm sure some of you might have heard of wonder before. Um, as, as we get going through literature, we find that we find empathy for people different than ourselves. And courage, kindness, friendship, character. These are the qualities that define us as human beings and propel us on occasion to greatness. So just learning to be better people ourselves. And learning our history through books as well. And it's really great. There's a lot of fun books out there about sports that kids don't even know that they'd be interested in. So about the, the teacher who invented basketball and the fact that baseballs didn't work until they learned about the secret mud that could change the ball that they could actually play with it. And we learned about our strong women. And we learn about our strong survivors. The I Survive series by Lauren Tarshish really takes kids into histories and, and helps them learn how difficult it would have been to be in some situations. And the author Kate DiCamillo really takes students into different situations as well. Um, one of the best read alouds for early readers, The Miraculous Journey of Edward Tulane. And um, I read it in a day to my own kids. They just were so enthralled by it. Um, I highly recommend any of her books. And if you have a kid that just likes to read the same book over and over again, guess what? That is okay. If they are feeling a sense of accomplishment for reading it all, they're becoming an, a classroom expert on it, and um, they're learning their reading. They're feeling comfortable, and they're, they're coming out of that. I was a product like that. I loved the Babysitter's Club. I don't know if any of you ever got in that stage, <laughs> but I was excited that the new ones were coming out. Um, and for students, I know the biggest thing right now are graphic novels. And there's some really, really fantastic ones being created. This one, When Stars Are Scattered, I feel like every person should read. It's about two boys that are in a refugee camp and just what their life is like. Um, just a really fantastic book to look at. And Raina Talgemeyer is kind of queen of the graphic novels right now. Um, kids can't get enough of her books. So if you're looking for an author to follow, that would be her. And speaking of graphic novels, we're learning more and more how awesome they are for students. They teach new vocabulary, visual literacy. They reinforce going left to right for reading. Um, they imagine the word comprehension so they can comprehend more because of the visuals. There's deeper interpretation of the story because the pictures really convey more of what's going on. 
and the speed brings confidence in new readers. My daughter struggles a little bit with reading and graphic novels have been a great segue to make her feel more confident. Um, a book I read just this summer, Disrupting Thinking, really made me think more about what type of readers we want and why, why how we read matters. A lot of times we ask the students, you know, who is the main author or who is the main character? What was the main thing that happened? Instead, we should really be thinking about what does the author want me to know? What surprised me? And what did I learn about myself and how does it help me become better? So by connecting our students to the books, it's much more meaningful and it makes us more empathetic as we learn more about characters and how they can change us. So um, I highly recommend this book, Disrupting Thinking, if you're really interested in um, how children read and how they should be reading. So if you're looking for some more great books, um, the ALA, the American Library Association, always has awards that they give every year. And um, if you click on it, you can see all the recommended books over the years. Um, the CCBC, I'm from Wisconsin, so this is the Cooperative Children's Book Center. They are really fantastic out of Madison. They create book lists on almost any topic. So if you're looking for a certain type of book, they are the people to go to. And it looks like I'm coming to the end. So if there's any questions or comments, I'd love to hear back from you if you'd love to, to ask me any questions. Let's see. I'll go into the chat and see if there's any questions there. So I'm looking, um, let's see. Um, and know that puppets are there, that's awesome. Kids do love telling stories with puppets. Um, let's see. Oh, and, I'm, and on the screen right now is the link that if you copy it, you can um, have a copy of this presentation. So right here, make sure you get this down if, that, if you would like a copy of all the resources in here. Um, oh, somebody else loves Book Creator. Awesome, a, a book on a trip to the zoo, that's fantastic. And the pigeon, yes. Um, yeah, and the book tasting, I really do recommend that. I just did it with a first grade class not so long ago and the kids loved it and they got to choose their favorite book from the tasting to check out and, um, and the kids really did enjoy being part of that. Um, so Junie B, I see a lot of kids love her, or a lot of people love her. Um, graphic novels, they're having a hard time reading chapter books. You know, I've been seeing that too, and I really think that COVID, um, I, I see that kids lost their attention span, and it's really hard for them to close up those chapter books. But I see that um, graphic novels are a good bridge and actually allow them to feel that sense of completion. So I don't know, I'm, I'm kind of torn in it. I, I do recommend that they move to some chapter books along with the graphic novels. And if they like a certain kind of graphic novel to move them to one that's similar. Um, but I, I do agree with that. Hello, Genius Books. I haven't read those, so I'll have to check those out. Good. Well, I know that there's people out there and I thank you for all being there today. Um, if there's any other questions or comments, I'd love to see them in the chat. Otherwise, I hope that you do get a copy of the presentation because there are some really great resources to try out on there.